I want to talk a little bit today about the PIP or the MPP solar inverter uh, that a lot of people are putting in and there are a lot of people that have issues with them and a lot of people that don't like me and I want to just kind of touch on that. One of the things that I've seen a lot about is all the stuff about how their efficiency, their, when they're in idle mode and they're not uh, pulling a load that some of them pull a lot more than they should and all this kind of stuff that it's closer to 30 watts or 50 watts and you know these kinds of issues that people bring up have nothing to do with homesteading and living off the grid it's it's like picking at the color of the paint of a car well that's not really really red that's whatever magenta you know who cares the thing is is does it work now if you want to get down to the nuts and bolts of it that pip inverter first off is made in Taiwan now anything made in Taiwan or made by the Chinese what they put as the maximum is the absolute maximum you expose it to more than that and you're gonna burn it up now the pip inverters that the ones that we've been installing are four kilowatts or four kVA in a lot of cases that figures out to being a little less than 4,000 watts but when people install those you know these things will go double that so they'll go 8 kilowatts for 5 seconds no more that's what they're rated at that's the max so that means if you put 8 kilowatts on it it's probably going to go for more for 2 seconds before it shuts down now you know you could you could take that as a as a point to pick at it and make that your real power point over the whole thing and say it's junk. Now, for my own system, I have a MagnaSign inverter that's rated at 4,400 watts, and it'll surge four times that for 20 seconds. Now, that's 16 kilowatts for 16 seconds that it'll go. I also have a Siemens charge controller. Now, looking at these two devices together just for that inverter I paid sixteen hundred dollars for it and that was five years ago almost six, no, six years ago and then the same thing with the charge controller I paid about four hundred for that so you're talking about two thousand dollars for these two items that do the same thing that the one MPP solar device will do all on its own so if I buy one of those that's four kilowatts and I need triple that, then I can buy two of them for eight hundred bucks a piece. That's sixteen hundred dollars. Now I've got the same specs as the inverter, but instead of being forty four hundred watts continuous, now it's eight thousand watts continuous, and it can go sixteen thousand watts doubled for five well two seconds. <clears throat> but I also have the advantage of that thing being um, completely in one box it charges the batteries as well as inverts the power for AC so there is one thing that I wanted to bring up there's that I have considered a valid argument is the fact that they put out 230 volts and getting that down to split phase you can buy a split phase transformer and get your split phase power out of it that way but then you have a lot of loss in your transformer because you're burning up well in the case of Dwayne he's burning I think it's 63 is what we tested it out to be so we're gonna do a little bit of comparison on Dwayne's where we see the kilowatt or the or how many watts his split phase transformer uses and then I was sitting around just pondering things one night and I got to thinking about another way that could be done to do a split phase transformer using two transformers now it's not really you know the uh, the accepted way to do it but it's just for testing purposes give some of you guys out there something to think about maybe you can come back and kind of give some of your results on it so anyway stay tuned we're gonna have a look at how this works out
Well, I'm over here at uh, Chris's place, and we're installing a solar system on his place. We're getting ready to build a house, and we're going to go through everything from the very foundation, beginning of building his house all the way to the end. We're setting up a temporary system right now that's going to power hit things like uh, air compressors and saws and that type of stuff. So he's got, I think, 275 watt panels. We've got three of them wired up going into this PIP inverter and into a battery bank. Now right now, all the wiring is just kind of cluged and that's because I'm, I had an idea that came to me the other day about uh, these split phase transformers because everybody knows that these things only put out 230 volts and there's no center tap to allow you to get a split phase system where you can have 230 volts with 200, uh, 115 volt legs with that center tap. Now on Dwayne's system we had purchased uh, one of those huge uh, 7 kilowatt inverters that was split phase, tied it into his inverter and just sitting there in its quiescent state, in other words no loads are turned on, that transformer that he has pulls 150 watts of parasitic power. Just sitting there doing nothing because it still has power going through it. Well what I got to thinking about is there are these less expensive transformers, step-down transformers that uh, you can buy and I got a couple of them on eBay. One of them I loaned to Dwayne to use originally so he could have 115 volt power. Well now with this system I've purchased two of these inverters, or not inverters but I mean transformers, step-up and step-down transform, trans, uh, transformers from eBay and what I've done is I've taken and wired these so that you can see that I wired one white wire in with the black wire of the other transformer and the black wire with the white wire of the other transformer. So in other words, the transformers are cross-wired for each other on the input. This is 230 volts coming in here and it goes into the inputs of these, in, of these two transformers and now if we look over here now I know that this is not you know this is normally would be the neutral side of an outlet but this is just for the purposes of my demonstration showing that we've got leg to leg we've got about 230 volts coming in so if I take this this jack here and move it to the other side now you can see I've got 115 volts. I know it says 114, but we're we're just saying the nominal voltage. And I go back and I've got 228 or 230 volts. I do the same on the bottom and I move it over and I get 115 volts. If I put them both on the neutral side, you can see I have zero volts coming out. So I move this one, there's my split phase. I've got it split out take it both to both of them there's 230 volts each one of these transformers is rated 3000 watts so together they're rated 6000 watts and each one of these costs about seventy dollars on ebay so now if we look at the quiescent current on the uh, on the inverter let me just cycle through all this right quick I'm gonna be Okay, there's our load consumption. And you can see here that on the load, instead of pulling 150 watts idle, we're, we're cycling around between 14 and 18 watts on our load side. So, we're using about, what is that, 90% less electricity at idle by using two separate transformers cross wiring the input and then on the output we have uh, 230 volts and 115 volts. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see about tying those outputs or I mean those those inputs to these outputs on the hot side. 
and then that way it'll it'll pass through the 230 volt side without affecting the the transformers not much electricity going through them so that'll really be able to boost up the output but the way it is these will handle easily the maximum current output on this which is four kilowatts these together are rated six kilowatts so I think we've got a good thing going here. Let me know what you think in the comments.